Hi fellow fishers, Roger Osborne here and today I'm going to talk to you about line for beach fishing. In this video I'm going to discuss monofilament, braid and fluorocarbon and specifically how they relate to beach fishing because when you go fishing the type of line that you need to use really depends on the type of fishing that you're doing. So we're going to look at what's best or what I think is best for beach fishing. Let's talk about bait fishing off the beach. The clear winner for me is monofilament line. And my reasons for that are is that mono actually has stretchability and is flexible which is gives you some level of forgiveness when you're playing a fish whereas braid is very rigid and there's a high possibility of actually pulling hooks out of a fish's mouth if you pull your line too hard. It takes a little bit of skill. I just don't think you need it on the beach in that regard. So the stretchability factor of uh, mono is really good. Another fantastic thing about monofilament is it's actually easy to tie knots. Uh, there's a big difference between tying knots um, with mono or with braid, way easier. So I think that's a big plus. Monofilament also has a high level of abrasion resistance. That's a benefit because anything that might fray your line, um, it's going to be stronger and it's less likely to break. So if there's anything out there, like if you hook a fish that's got a rough sort of exterior, like a shark or something, it's not going to break as easy. Or if you have any sort of obstacles out there in the surf, the line's going to be stronger. It's been proven over years and years of use. It's existed for a lot longer than braid. Braid is a relatively recent thing. It certainly has some great advantages, but fishermen have been using mono for decades and have landed so many fish. It actually is a really good product. It's also low cost. It's less expensive than braided lines and fluorocarbon. I like to use mono main line with a fluorocarbon leader. That's my preference when I'm bait fishing off the beach. And when I go to buy monofilament line from the shops, I always try to buy a good quality brand and I try to buy the one that's got the thinnest diameter because that aids with casting and water resistance. So there you have it. That's my thinking about mono. It's definitely my number one choice when I'm bait fishing off the beach. Let's look at lure fishing off the beach. Definitely when you're fishing with lures off the beach or casting lures, braid is the clear winner. The first reason for this is castability. Because of its thinner diameter, you can actually cast it much further. There's much less wind resistance. And the reason that that's a benefit is because if you cast further when you're retrieving a lure you're covering more ground and the more time that the lure is actually in the water the more chance you've got of hooking a fish. Also if you can cast further it means that you can potentially reach fish zones that you wouldn't be able to reach if your capacity to cast was less and that's often the case off the beach. If you want to cast across a gutter out onto a sandbar where there's some white water and pull your lure through the white water and over the edge into the deep water, sometimes you've actually got to cast a fair way to achieve that. It all depends on the features on the beach on any given day. But certainly being able to cast further distance is a big plus um, for lure fishing. The next great thing about using braid for spinning is that you don't need as big a reel. Because of the diameter of the line, you can actually get away with a smaller fishing reel, which means it's not as heavy, it's a little bit easier to handle. So you can actually catch bigger fish on smaller reels. And I kind of like the idea of that. It just means you know your whole outfit's a little bit lighter. Another great feature of using braided line is that there's very little line twist. And if you've been around for any length of time, you'll know that with nylon or monofilament lines, Oftentimes you can get twist in the line, which is a real pain. And even though you use swivels sometimes, you still get twist. 
So being able to eliminate twist when you're lure fishing, especially when you're putting in cast after cast after cast, that's uh, another really good thing about using braid uh, when you're lure fishing. Also, there's less drag in current. So for example, if you've cast out your lure, you're going to wind it in and there's a side current, you can end up with a big bow in your line. Now that's not the end of the world, however, if there's less of a bow and it's more direct, that's better. So when you're using braid, you actually have less bow in your line in a current. When you spool your fishing reel with braid, also you have a much greater line capacity. Obviously that means that you can fit more line on your reel. One of the advantages of that is that if you hook a really big fish, you're less concerned about getting spooled because you know you've got a decent amount of line on your reel. Due to the low stretch of braided line, when you're spinning, you can feel and sense the action of the lure much better. And that's important because you want to know that your lure is actually working. Uh, if you're using a particular type of lure that has an action, when you're using braid, you're really sensitive to the movement of that lure. So you can be confident that it's actually doing what it's supposed to do when you're winding it in. And sometimes if you were to, for example, hook some weed, usually if you hook up on a bit of weed, a little bit of weed gets caught on your lure, the lure loses its action. So if you're using braid, you, you're able to tell that the lure's working and tell also if there's something that's got caught on the lure and the lure's not working. If the conditions at the beach are windy, that also helps, uh, using braid line helps in that situation purely because of the less wind resistance. So that uh, helps when you're casting, because when you're casting your line out, you have less wind resistance. The lines, you know, even often when you cast, because of wind, your line can get a bow in it, even in the air. But because of the thinner diameter of braid, you have less bow in your line. It's less affected by the wind. Uh, and also, I think that you can still cast further, definitely cast further in windy conditions uh, when you're using braid. So in summary, certainly when it comes to lure fishing, braid is the big winner and uh, much better on a whole lot of levels. Fluorocarbon, what use does it have on the beach? Obviously it's very popular as a leader, but can you use fluorocarbon as your main line? And then when you do that, you actually don't even have to bother about tying a leader because you've just got your whole line as fluorocarbon. Well, yes you can, and I do that, but if you're going to do that, you need to buy an easy casting fluorocarbon because some brands or styles of fluorocarbon are really stiff. And I actually bought some fluorocarbon, put it on one of my reels that I use for fishing for whiting and brim, and it was like casting rope. It was, so, it was so stiff, just terrible really. I had to remove it off the reel and then I didn't realize at that time that you could buy easy casting fluorocarbon, which I then did. Um, but my main, what I would use, if I'm gonna use fluorocarbon as a main line, I really would just use it fishing for small species like brim and whiting. On a light beach outfit, where I'm really only using line of about four or five kilo breaking strain. So yes, you can use fluorocarbon as a main line, but I would mainly stick to just light line, fishing for small fish, and then make sure that I buy an easy casting fluorocarbon. I'm so excited that very soon I'm going to be launching rogersfishing.com. This is going to be an amazing fishing resource, which has instructional videos, step-by-step -step fishing courses that I'm currently writing, cheat sheets, ways for you to save money and be efficient with your fishing. I'm going to be talking about detailed things like how do you know the difference between a bite and a wave when you're fishing off the beach? Or how do you adjust your drag correctly and can you adjust it while you're actually playing a fish? I want to build a membership community that meets your needs, full of anglers who are keen to help each other and share knowledge. Each fortnight at my new membership site, I'm going to run online sessions using Zoom. So can I ask you a favour? 
If you could visit rogersfishing.com, simply fill in your name and email address and share with me on the form what you'd like to see in our new community. I want to build a community that gives you what you need and that's why your feedback is so important. Thanks for helping me out. And if you've found this video on line choice for beach fishing instructional and helpful, please make sure that you give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And all the best with your fishing.